A rare display of public anger against China's punishing COVID lockdowns has driven hundreds of demonstrators to the streets in cities right across the country. The unprecedented protest action was sparked by an apartment building fire on Thursday, which saw 10 people die in the far west city of Urumqi. Locals argue the slow emergency response was hampered by lockdown measures, which have seen some residential compounds closed off. Since then, protests have sprung up in cities nationwide, including Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, Xi'an, Wuhan and Guangzhou. Such a display of civil disobedience in mainland China hasn't been seen since Xi Jinping took power a decade ago. And it's now morphing into something much more astonishing. Public fury against the ruling Communist Party and even calls for Xi Jinping to step down. Watch this. Down with the Chinese Communist Party. Down with Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping! Lift lockdown for Xinjiang. Lift lockdown for all of China. Well, Perry Link is a professor at the University of California, Riverside, and specializes in China issues. He's also an editor of the Tiananmen Papers, which details internal government documents relating to the massacre. Perry joins us tonight from Riverside, California. Hi there, Perry. Thanks very much for speaking with us tonight. Can you start um, by, g g by giving us some context? When is the last time we would have seen a display of defiance like this in China? Well, if you count Hong Kong as part of China, which we need to do now, then the summer of 2018, there were massive demonstrations. But they were a little different because they were focused on Hong Kong and didn't spread to other cities. The last time we saw something like the current protests that do spread from city to city to city and are symptomatic of a widespread malaise in China was the 1989 spring that ended, as we know, in a, an ugly massacre. Could this end up being a real threat to Xi's leadership? How do you think he will respond? The protests themselves cannot overthrow the government or Xi, but it can make him lose face among rivals in the leadership. And they're the ones that could bring him down if they got their act together and wanted to do that. In the Communist Party system in China, everyone is appointed by the immediate superior. But when you get to the top position, where she is, there is no superior position. So the rivals around you who could find that you had made a serious mistake and on those grounds pull you down are the threat to him. And that's a real threat. I'm not predicting it, but that is where a big change for him would come if it did come. OK, how much longer can China's COVID zero response continue, given uh, what we're seeing there today? You're right that the COVID zero response is the catalyst that sparked all of this, not only because of the deaths in Ulamuchi, which have gotten now nationwide notice in China, but because other cities, especially Shanghai, especially Guangzhou and Zhengzhou, where the Foxconn a factory makes iPhones, and other places have also had lockdowns and generated a lot of resentment. This is going back six months ago that this resentment started. So what happened in Xinjiang is a, a symptom of a deeper problem. And I wouldn't say that it's just a zero tolerance of COVID policy, because there's a deeper malaise especially among young people in China. And this is an issue around which everyone can agree and come out to the streets on. OK, Perry, thanks very much for your analysis tonight. It's fascinating stuff. Thank you. OK, my pleasure.